Hubble's Law, Edwin Hubble. Edwin Hubble uh, lived in the um, early of 20th, 20th century. Uh, he um, did most of his historic work at the um, Mount Wilson Observatory, uh, and that is just outside uh, Pasadena, California, outside Los Angeles, at the 100-inch telescope at that time, over 100 years ago, the largest telescope in the world. Uh, then the uh, Hale Observatory, the Mount Wilson Observatory, became the largest with the 200 inch. So in this particular view, the telescope is pointing uh, straight up. And the 100 inch mirror is down here at the bottom of the telescope. Uh, a chair gives you some perspective of the uh, size of the telescope, a 100 inch mirror, um, 100 inches. One of Hubble's um, great work was working uh, with photographs of what was known as the spiral nebulae. We saw nebula out there that were gaseous looking of nebula, nebulae, that were spiral in nature. And the Andromeda galaxy, as we mentioned just previously, is the uh, only galaxy you can see easily from North America without the eye or with the unaided eye, uh, in a very dark place, and very, uh, pretty easy to locate uh, in, in the sky. And they did not know what these things were. They had this spiral pattern. Uh, they weren't sure exactly what they were, so they called them spiral nebulae. And there was a great debate about what they were, whether they were, um, whether they were inside our galaxy or outside our galaxy. And one astronomer in particular uh, began to use the term island universes. And uh, Hubble was able to locate within uh, the spiral nebulae, locate a star, which he perceived, and it's right here inside the two marks, he found a variable star. And he, that star was gaining in brightness and decreasing in brightness uh, in a regular pattern. And at the time, a period luminosity relationship determined that if you knew the period of a star, you would then know its luminosity. And then by using the inverse square law of light around it, you could then calculate the distance to the star. So he found they found the star that was variable. They found out that it had a low apparent brightness. It had to be very, very far away. But when you compare that to its luminosity determined by the period of the variable, he was able to determine that this thing was outside our known Milky Way, at least a million light years away. And so at that point, it was then determined that these things were islands, of island universes or islands in the universes, in the universe, these very large galaxies, these very large spiral nebulae that then, uh, that, we, that we now call galaxies. So the Andromeda galaxy was one in which Hubble was able to verify that these things really are not gaseous clouds where stars are forming, and they're not outside our own Milky Way, but rather they are outside our Milky Way. And all of these dots that you see in this picture are stars inside our Milky Way, raindrops on the window, and as you look past the raindrops, you can look out and see uh, the Andromeda spiral and a couple of its little satellite galaxies, the same way that the Milky Way has two satellite galaxies that are visible only from the southern hemisphere. So we now have galaxies. And Hubble then went on to measure distances to these galaxies. And as Hubble worked uh, through uh, these measurements, he and an associate Notice that galaxies uh, go to redshift in their spectrum, and this collecting this um, the spectrum was very very tedious. It was very time consuming, and here is a representative summary chart. Uh, certainly not the whole work that Hubble did, but uh, a summary of what he was able to discover. First of all, notice um, on the right side uh, we have spectra. 
On the left side, we have images of galaxies. And these galaxies are perceived left to be approximately the same size. They look like elliptical galaxies, all about the same size. So it seems to indicate that if these things are really all the same size, as they get farther away, they're going to appear to be smaller to us. Uh, and on the right side, we see uh, spectra. And these spectra, uh, these uh, pieces of glass with uh, photographic emulsions long before electronics that we know today uh, and the type of electronics you have in a camera or a cell phone, uh, they collected these images night after night uh, through the, looking through the telescope. And this particular your thumb, the length and width of your thumb on a piece of glass, that spectrum is uh, collected. And sometimes the, the, this took several nights to collect this. Uh, on the top of each picture and on the bottom of each picture, you see spectra lines that are made in, in, at the telescope. This indicates that nothing's moving. So they're reference points. In the middle is where the galaxy spectrum is. And that galaxy spectrum is right in here. And two uh, lines there are identified. Uh, those two lines that are identified are H and K. Those represent the uh, corresponding dark lines in the Hopper found. And he labeled them alphabetically, A, B, C, D. And A, the H line of Fraunhofer and the K line of Fraunhofer are... Um, are two dark lines in the, in the sun spectrum, and we find them in other stars and in other galaxies as well. And he was able to uh, measure the displacement of where these H and K lines should be to where they were in the, spe in the spectrum. They can measure their, their, uh, their wavelength um, and the change in wavelength over the original wavelength uh, gives you the fraction of the speed of light. It's a percent. <laughs> In chemistry class or biology class, you may have measured percent change. It's really um, the change divided by the, orig the original value times 100, uh, and it gives you a percent change. Well, that is what really we're measuring here. So we're measuring the percent of the speed of light that this particular galaxy is moving. And so Hubble and, uh, measured this galaxy to be moving uh, away from us. It shifted. The Doppler effect that this object is, we're separating, we're getting farther apart, moving at 1,200 kilometers per second, per second, not hour or minute, but 1,200 kilometers per second. In the Ursa Major, uh, it uh, is moving at 15,000. The H and K lines are right here. Notice their displacement from uh, the previous one. Uh, and this corresponds to a velocity of separation of 15,000 kilometers per second. In the third example, the H and K lines are displaced all the way over here, indicating 22,000 kilometers per second. And the next one, uh, 39,000 and 61,000 kilometers per second. Remember that the speed of light is about 300,000 kilometers per second. So we're starting to reach march, uh, pretty good uh, fractions of the speed of light for this. Hubble then also began to chart the, the variable stars where he could measure their absolute brightness against their apparent brightness. The period, the uh, period luminosity relationship tells us that a star's brightness can be determined by the distance, the, the time in which it changes its brightness and repeats that process. And so he was able to look at these galaxies and see in them variable stars and other stars that were similar to stars in our own galaxy. And so he could estimate their luminosity or absolute magnitude, the, the brightness at 10 parsecs. And so he was then able to estimate pretty well the distances of these particular objects. And in measuring their distances, he could then chart how far away they were are compared to their velocity. And he did that, he got... He got a graph where the galaxies seemed to line up pretty much in a straight line. And quite simply, Hubble's law says that the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it's separating 
from our own uh, from our galaxy that the universe is expanding and so he was able to make these measurements of distance and uh, velocity and it is difficult to measure those distances brightnesses of those stars and eventually you see galaxies so far away that you don't see any stars at all you see smudges of light so uh, it's been developed then that Hubble's law, that there's some factor in here called Hubble's constant. And if we can measure the redshift of a, a galaxy, we can measure its velocity, we can then calculate its distance by knowing the Hubble constant. And the Hubble constant is one that is of great interest. What is the Hubble constant? The value is approximately 70 kilometers per second, and you, you will hear different values of the Hubble constant because that indicates then some distance. So originally the Hubble constant, the, really, which is the slope of the line, the algebraic slope of the line, remember, is the change in y over the change in x. That's the constant, that's the slope of the line, and that's what the Hubble constant is. It's the slope of what we think is this linear relationship, at least in nearby space, of the, um, uh, the you know, relationship of distance and velocity. And so for many years, there has been this de debate and e measurement and the Hubble Space Telescope uh, out there above the Earth's atmosphere is, is making uh, greater and greater estimations or calculations of the Hubble constant. And originally it was around 50 and the Hubble constant today uh, is estimated to be in the 70s, low 70s. Uh, your book states uh, about 72 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That's the uh, that is the Hubble constant uh, because you take uh, meters per second or kilometers per second is a velocity, and here are measured in mega or million parsecs. And this is how we are estimating distances to galaxies, and this is what is being used to estimate what will happen to the um, the universe um, using the Hubble and the Hubble constant, and the Hubble constant has been used to estimate uh, the age of the universe as well.